He's going to discuss some of his ideas that helped me over the past couple of years. And interestingly, to help us complete the final stages of our transition. I want to thank you, Rick, very much for having me here tonight. And uh, Rick and I go back a long time. We're about the same age. He's 66. I'll be 66 in December. When I look at him, uh, I feel like he looks a lot younger than I do. So apparently radiation has some kind of youth benefit. <laughs> great crowd. I don't mean anything weird by this. Must be 125 people here tonight, or as President Trump would say, two million. <laughs> Wasn't quite sure how that was going to go over. <laughs> but I did a little research, and I don't think I was first choice to be in this time slot, because there are some people here from uh, other countries. Who, so there were thoughts of bringing in somebody who's bilingual, which I am not. But I guess they figured I was better than the next choice of having Archie Adams speak. Oh, God. <laughs> who, despite having a very subtle southern accent, is basically considered barely lingual. <laughs> With that in mind, I have a few topics I need to cover. It turns out I'm not only consulting to your company, Bechtel, I am somehow being utilized by them tonight as a tax write-off. <laughs> So I'm hoping between the two factors I can save enough money so you can all go somewhere even nicer for next month's final quarterly all-hands meeting than the inn and spa here at Loretto, such as the Holiday Inn Express at Los Alamos, for example. <laughs> I'm sorry, why are you jumping in? <laughs> Rick, can we have him let go? <laughs> and just for the record, I live in New York, and I hate the winter, but I did something last winter that I'm proud of. I raised $5,000 for lymphoma. I did my very first polar bear swim last January. Thank you. I didn't actually do it in New York. I was in Barbados. <laughs> And it was a much easier thing. <laughs> and with that in mind, it is so nice to see so many safety officials here. It's good to know if there's any kind of emergency back in Los Alamos tonight that uh, it's that more likely to be mishandled <laughs> and turn into a bigger disaster since, let's be honest, the new team really isn't ready. <laughs> So you're okay with the Trump stuff, but not that. <laughs> and just so you know, I believe in contingency planning, which is why tonight I made plans in case this doesn't go well. I have mapped out exits and evacuation routes, I have received a certified check payable to cash, and I have an Uber waiting outside ready to go. <laughs> and I know some of you are being asked to leave after 30 or even 40 years or in other words, just as you were about to finally get your security clearances approved. <laughs> Thank you, one person. <laughs> and all joking aside, it takes a year and a half to get approved, and that's wrong. Particularly when you consider Burning Man can put it up an entire city in two days in the middle of the desert without a single permit. <laughs> The big question for many of you is what you're going to do after the change. And we've looked at the numbers, and 13 of you are leaving for new assignments, 29 of you are staying on, 9 of you have offers pending, 4 of you are undecided, and the rest of you are going to drive out in the desert and start a meth lab like Brian Cranston and break it down. <laughs> so it's good to see you're all planning to be productive members of society. Unfortunately, some of you have indicated you plan to spend more time with your families. And believe me when I tell you, you don't want to do this. <laughs> I once took a break to spend my time with my family. I quickly found out they didn't want to spend that time with me. <laughs> Nevertheless, I want to compliment you all because I think you folks from Bechtel are terrific. Evidenced by the fact that the Wall Street Journal rated your company as one of the top five of its size and kind in the world. And that's 
shouldn't be that surprising, considering there are only about five companies <laughs> of your size and kind of the world. With that in mind, Rick Case has assured me you're going to spend so much money advertising in the journal this year, you're going to buy your way right up to number one. <laughs> That's another reason I admire you all for being here, because whether or not you're a worker, administrator, engineer, Bechtel executive, whether it's a CFO, CEO, COO, or a member of the PLO, <laughs> whether you're a bricklayer, a boiler maker, a puppet, a poet, a pirate, a pauper, or just some dork who walked on off the streets tonight, the fact is I know each of you is a big shot in your own leaky offices. <laughs> And let's be honest, while some of you are big fish in small ponds and some of you are small fish in big ponds, I really appreciate that you came tonight to the Loretta Lynn Spa to be part of a group of tiny little guppies in a large yuppie yoga massage bobcat chipmunk skunk raven hummingbird horned owl hairy woodpecker mosquito deer tick bear redneck wildfire flash flood and radioactive rattlesnake infested cesspool <laughs> I think it was the horned owl that put that over the top. <laughs> I also know you're going to miss the incredible restaurants. <laughs> like Subway. <laughs> Domino's. <laughs> or Sonic's. <laughs> all of which have international reputations as being most likely to have carcinogens in their food. <laughs> so technically, you'd be healthier going out in the desert and just eating the sand. <laughs> you also have Time Out Pizza, which is working on a new ad. If the big one ever hits, for God's sake, don't make your last slice Domino's. <laughs> At Time Out, there's always time for one last pizza. <laughs> I'm also excited because I've been asked to announce you folks at Bechtel are going to be introducing new voice-activated phone technology that's so accurate only one person's voice will activate it, which is scary because if it's ever hooked up to Marshall Bullock's voice, it's also going to be so loud it's probably going to kill small furry animals. <laughs> okay. Now one of the big issues with nuclear is where are we going to store all the waste? And I worked with Rick at Yucca Mountain, which seemed like the answer, but there were cost problems with transporting repository casks with armed escorts. And we solved that problem by finding actual Las Vegas escorts who were paying them by the hour. <laughs> and I've got to be honest, most of them were already armed. And that brings me to why I'm really here, because I know some of my ideas may be a little bit off the wall. And some of you may be skeptical of some of the things I talk about, which is why I want to assure you of something that's dear to my heart, and that is the fact that I was not born into money. I've had to work really hard to be successful. In fact, when I was 21 years old, I was an alcoholic, I was broke, and I was living on welfare in New York City. Today, I'm earning about $5 million a year. I'm still an alcoholic. <laughs> I still collect welfare, <laughs> but I'm earning five million a year. If I can make that money with my background, you should be able to train the new transition team in atomic and molecular science, chemical engineering, computational science, condensed matter physics and material science, cyber science, industrial hygiene, energy density, high whatever, laser pulse power and accelerated technology, and decontamination for spent fuel pools, swimming pools, water slide parks, <laughs> drip shields, and Kenny Rogers roasters, and a whole bunch of other stuff that maybe three of you could possibly understand. If I had to read this garbage every day, I would just shoot myself in the head once and for all and be done with it. So good luck with the transition, and these, by the way, are the actual reasons Ray Patterson retired early. <laughs> Welcome the spouses here tonight. I know many of you resent the long hours your husbands, wives, or insignificant others have put in. I hope in some way this evening is going to make up for those nights when you've been left alone and been depressed and maybe felt like ending it all. 
Because when all is said and done, this dinner is all you're going to get. <laughs> I hope you remember tonight. Realize you may only have to wait another year before you get another free meal when they bring you all back after the new people fail. <laughs> I hope by now you figured out I am not a consultant to Bechtel or the government, and if you haven't, uh, you're fired now. <laughs> I'm a stand-up comedian from New York. Uh, my name isn't Philip Schneider, it's Harry Dilber Friedman, although that's my stage name. My real name is Biff Wilson. <laughs> and the reason I'm really here tonight is to talk to you all about Amway products. <laughs> I want to thank you. You've been a delightful crowd, and thank you, Rick, for this is the third time. Rick used me at Yankee Nuclear about 20 years ago, about Yucker 10 years ago, and uh, I can't wait till he gets his next nuclear plant. <laughs> thank you very much.